uh, let's for this demo session uh, like uh, let us go ahead and uh, see about the details of component organizer so in the component organizer it provides the components which are required by ab initio to develop your graphs so when you are in the need of developing your graph applications your component organizer gives the details of each component and it is categorized according to their functions and uh, within that component organizer itself you can see the components names and a small description which displays what is that component and what is the purpose of that particular component to get the component organizer in your abinitio gd screen you have to go to gd menu bar choose view and then component organizer or you can choose f9 which toggles between the views of component organizer if you press one time component organizer will come up and if you press again it will go off so you can use f9 to toggle between the views so here are the basic component categories that you will see in component categories window so in the right side i have the screenshot for the same so if you can see the several components are listed according to their functions and are categorized into different folders uh, see the components which are related to sort are placed under sort folder let me discuss about the different folders which are present under component categories continuous components database components data sets interchange components internet metadata miscellaneous partitioning components sort components transform translate validate and xml so as you see different components are in different folders so if you want to say any perform any data manipulation or transformation of the real data mostly will be using the components which are present inside the transform components so <clears throat> and we have data sets so those are the components which provide your input or target data and then database components which helps you to connect to the databases abinitio supports a wide variety of databases ranging from oracle to hdfs connectors so you can use any of the database components to connect to the databases and then we have partitioning components sort components and the rest so let's see an input file component which is present under data set so input file component is one of the prominently used component which is present under data set folder so it is used to read a serial file or a multi file in ab initio so multi file is nothing but having different data partitions and one control partitions i have attached this screenshot which shows the uh, input file component here so from the view in the gd itself we can see whether it is an input file serial or a multi file so if there are multiple cylindricals here it is a multi file if it turns into a serial file it will be a single cylinder so we have to use the single input file component to read a serial file and also a multi file there are no important parameters for it so once we get the input file from the component organizer into our working canvas we have to specify the input file name along with its absolute path the layout which where the component is going to run and the dml which is used to describe the data which is going to be read into the input port so once you double click the input file component you will get the properties window like this it has different tabs description access parameters and ports so basically in the description port you will be given the input file name along with its path and then a label to identify it so once you have given the description the yellow color markings in the description tab will go off so whenever you insert a component into the gd canvas it will be marked with yellow colors 
So it specifies that there are some required parameters which still needs to be addressed. So once you finish up all the required parameters, the yellow color markings will be gone and your component is ready to use. And the most important part of specifying the input file parameters is its ports. So port is where we specify the DML which is used to, which, which actually used by Abinicio to interpret the data which it is reading. So there are different options for ports. Either you can propagate from neighbors, you can use another port in graph, you can use a DML file which has been already created or you can embed it directly in the component itself. So since it is the first component in a graph, so you can just embed the DML by clicking the embed option and then typing the DML in the record format box. So you can click new here and then you can type the record format DML as you would like. So suppose consider like if you have an employee file and you want to read the employee data using this input file component. So basically you will be giving the input file name along with its path in the description window. So it will be like this. So in your description window you can just type your employee file path and then the name. So the file specification here specifies your input file is a serial file. Suppose if you are reading a multi file then instead of specifying file you will be specifying M file. So after you specify file or M file, the notation in the GD view changes according to that. You can use parameters also to specify the absolute locations. So here is how you specify the file names. And uh, regarding the DML, you have to go to the ports tab and then you have to click on embed. So that's the option which we are going to use to read this employee file. And uh, we have already discussed about the ports and uh, the DML. So the DML starts with record and ends with end keyword. So inside this record and end keyword, you have to specify the DML field by field starting with the data type and then the length of the field and then the name of the field. So since it is an employee file, let's create a sample file with a sample DML with uh, the normal fields like name, ID, city, salary, gender, etc. So let's start with name. So I'm giving a comma delimited delimiter so till my first comma, it will take it as name and then I am giving the ID column and then you have salary and then we have string. city next we have the gender column followed by the new line character so I'm using the new line character to have proper readability so that every record ends with the line so when you are reading the file outside the GDE, you can sense like every record will be in a single line. So basically you will be writing the DML how the file is created before. 
So this is a format to give your DML. So either you can save it into a file and then you can give the file name using the use file option or you can just embed it in the component. Uh, as you start developing your graphs, you will be propagating the DMLs from the neighboring components. Since it is a first component and we don't have any other component in your graph, we will be embedding the DML inside the component. And then after this, you can propagate. And by default, Abinitio will actually have the option as propagate from neighbors. So once it starts propagating, if you want or if you want to change the components layout and the DML, you can just go ahead and edit the DML which you are trying to create. For example, like after reading from the input file, when you want to transform the data, so you will have different rec record format after that. So in that case, you can just edit that particular component and edit the DML inside it rather than propagate it. So once we give this values in the DML, you can click on validate option which is present here to check the syntax whether you have created correctly or not. So once you give the DML and file name, your input file is ready to use. So we have two modes to give the DML. Either you can type it in the text view or you can open up the grid view where you can select the available data types and then the length columns. So here you can give the field names and from for the data type you'll have a combo box and then you can select from the available list. You can give the length as a fixed length or as a delimiter to delimit the different fields. As it is a data set component, you can view the data which is present using the Abinitio GDE screen. So once you have given the file name and then the DML, click on apply, OK, come out of the properties window, right click the input file component, you will get multiple options. Go to the option called view data. So this option will be present only in data set components. So if you click on data set, if you click on view data, you will see a screen which shows how the data is organized. You can see different columns which you have given and the data. So this view data option will be enabled only for data set components, say like input table, input file, output table, output files. So here we can see what are the different types of data that can be described using Abinitio. So we have both fixed size and variable length data types. Your character sets like ASCII, Unicode, EBCDIC, all those character sets are supporter. And then we have different data types ranging from normal string integers to complex real numbers and then unions, so those vectors, these kinds of data types are supporter. So when you want to access the field characteristics, for example, like when you are specifying a date column, you need to specify the date format. So in that case, you can use the attributes pane in the grid view to select the field descriptions. When you want to see the additional attributes, you have to click the attributes item on the record formats editor. Let me show you how this is done. So here we have the record format editor. This is the attributes pane viewing toggle. So if you click on this icon, this extra box will come. So where you can specify the extra attributes for a particular column. So you can specify the date format for a date column here. After specifying a new field which has a date data type or date, date time and then you can specify the format here. If you are not specifying the date format for a date column, during validation it will throw an error. So to correct this you have to give the proper attributes for each data type. So similar to this 
we have output file components. Hello? Cut again. Hello? Yes. Hello, Anne? Yeah. For, for demo soon, this is fine, right? Or we have to continue? Uh, if you need, you can. No, I, I, I guess like this is fine. If you want another demo video, I think you can. Then, then it's fine, then it's fine, Cut again. Yeah. Thank you. I think for demo session, probably you will be giving this to other students only, right? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, normally how I work is, so once I get the requirement, uh, like uh, what the student wants or something, I'll arrange a demo session particularly on the first day. Okay. So, once a student is willing to take the session after the demo, then we will continue with the session. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can have uh, demo sessions for every student like uh, before the start of the session like uh, uh, what is uh, actually what is this actually requirement like whether he is already working on urban issue or is new to urban issue. So we can get all the details and what is he expecting out of this training and then we can proceed in that direction. Then that will be fine. Okay. Is it okay? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. So, can I ask few questions? Yeah, sure. Like, uh, uh, within how many days you will complete this entire course? So, actually, if it is like uh, online training, I have the material for 30 to 35 hours. Okay. And uh, in the current scenario, what I'm handling is probably we'll be having a daily one hour session or one to one and a half hour session. So okay. that will come to 30 to 35 hours. Okay. Then other yeah. than so it, what all technologies you are dealing with? No, no. Currently I'm dealing with only a Benicio ETL design and development. Okay. Yeah. And uh, will you give assignments uh, during the session? During the yeah, yes. So uh, the session will proceed like we'll have one theory session and then we'll have one practical session. So whatever we have discussed on that particular day, I'll be giving case studies so the student can practice using the tool and uh, they can uh, get accustomed according to that. So when you get this case studies, suppose if you, have, if you are completing five components on that particular day, I'll be giving case studies for each component. Okay. So you can see it in the screen, right? We have different solutions. So these are real-time scenarios how we will get in the project. Okay. So once the student has completed or if you face any issues during uh, this case study completion, then we will uh, discuss it during the next session and I will uh, clarify all this doubt. After that, we will proceed to the next session. Okay.